okay? So we've got a couple minutes to go. Nice to see you, Les. <laughs> nice to be here. Okay, we have five people in the waiting room, so I'll start admitting them. And let's see what we've got going here. Wonderful to have more students and different students with us this time. These are graduate students, which we're very excited about. And I really am not sure how many people will be joining the call today. Hi, Betty. Hi nice there. To, nice to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> uh, for those of you that are just now coming on the call and that are new to our call, Betty is um, uh, is our, what is she? Executive Director Emerita of the <laughs> University Emeriti Center. Oh, that sounds so important. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Not not nearly as much as uh, the current one. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, that structure <laughs> wouldn't be there for me to stand on. Um, so right now we have 16 participants. Uh, we're going to be admitting. Uh, we've got Cal with us today. Want to raise your hand, Cal? Uh, so he's um, from the School of Dentistry and, and the immediate past president of the Retired Faculty Association. <laughs> so nice to see you again, Sergio and Paul and Judy. And you're going to see somebody that joins us that their, their name is always iPad. I don't know who iPad is. <laughs> Probably Phyllis. I see Phyllis's face. Karen is joining us. And it looks like Connie is joining us, which is great. It's nice to see Connie. I really miss Connie. Connie, if you'll see my background behind me, this is the Emeritus Center's, like the uh, Office of Religious Life and the Religious Center's background, but this is where the Emeritus Center is. And, um, uh, so I really miss Connie because Connie is my sweet mate. She's usually in the office with me. Nice to see you, Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Courtney Hello. is student leaders. She's been managing our Zoom sessions for us. Let's see. Let's see. We have Janice is joining us. So we're just going to give folks a few more minutes to come on the call and then we'll be able to um, start off again. This will be um, part professional, part uh, intergenerational discussion with students and um, retirees and current faculty and staff. Let's see here. Jeanette, are you back in the office or is this virtual? <laughs> totally virtual. Um, the only time I go into the into my office is, is when I have to pick up supplies and bring them back to my office. I am currently, um, doing mailings and forwardings and stuff like that just like our student workers used to do so i'm the only physical person that can actually go into the office um, but yes yeah, since march 13th we have been uh completely virtual okay so um i am um in the process of admitting people um i am going to let's see here and I am going to make a, a, a few of folks co-hosts so that uh, if we have need help um, managing, I see Courtney is already co-host. Did you? Uh, I added it when the, I registered, created the meeting. Okay, yes, okay. So we wanna give Katie a co-host position as well. And are any of our OT faculty and students, would any of you want to be a co-host today? So that sure. you have control? So who's it? Uh, Maria Cristina. Ah, okay. Oh, Maria, you're host. I, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure. Ask Courtney. <laughs> 
Uh, I did put you as co-host though. Okay, and we want Katie to be a co-host too, because Katie's really good at, at checking chats sometimes when I miss them or admitting people as they come in the back door. Um, any of those kinds of things. So right now we have uh, 25 people on the call and counting. So as people uh, come on board, uh, we will admit them. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I, uh, if you're looking at, you can look at either speaker view or gallery view. I prefer gallery view so I can see everyone uh, sort of at the same time, but that's up to you to choose however you like to do it. And um, we are very um, excited that we have a new partnership with uh, the USC Chan uh, Occupational Therapy, which I, it has a longer name, so I will let our faculty <laughs> um, explain and, and give the proper wording and all of that. So we have faculty and we have graduate OT students with us today. And so um, I am going to, uh, again, welcome everyone, ask them, um, our OT faculty and staff, uh, faculty and uh, students, please be sure that you um, give us your title, um, tell us a little bit about your, your role, and also I think it would be great to have uh, at least uh, to hear from the faculty and the students from occupational therapy, where are you today? What city are you in? Um, how are you feeling about this, you know, working remotely and, and, and the situation? And what, what your plans are for our partnership uh, going forward in the next nine weeks? So um, I'm going to um, give it to uh, Maria uh, to get started. Sure. Well, um, thank you. And thank you for having us here. We're very excited. We have uh, a lot of those answers to the questions you pose in the presentation that we created. So mm -hmm. perhaps we can answer them in the presentation or would you rather us do it right now, like popcorn style? And uh, it is definitely up to you how you, if you have a presentation, you'd like to share your screen and get started that way. That's totally fine as well. Uh, does yeah, the team agree have, with that? Yeah, good. Yeah, I have everything set up. So I will share my screen right now and then we'll jump right into it. Can everybody hear me okay? Can yes. you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Great, awesome. Okay, so thank you all for being here this afternoon. We're really excited to be working with you and to share a little bit about what we do and maybe some things that we can share with you as well. So this is just our introduction to what occupational therapy is. Uh, we will also introduce ourselves one by one. There's seven of us. We all have very unique backgrounds and things that we enjoy about OT. So we'll be sharing a little bit about that. Uh, we'll also explain what OT is and some services that we can provide or some things that we may be able to bring to the table and that you may be interested in. We'll also talk about our survey that we'll be sending out after the end of this presentation where we will get feedback from you about what, will we, what you want us to do in future Zoom meetings and then we'll also be talking about doing individual sessions with you where we talk with you one-on-one -on -one and maybe work together to help you improve something that you would like to. So I'll, oh, I have one more thing to add. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, we would really appreciate if you put those either in the chat or hold them till the end. We will be facilitating a discussion to answer all your questions at the end. So we appreciate you doing that. Uh, so I'm gonna jump right in and introduce myself. I am the first one. So my name is Cheyenne. I'm originally from Seattle, Washington, and I moved to the LA area to complete my master's in occupational therapy with USC, and I will be continuing through to my occupational therapy doctorate uh, starting in the fall. My undergrad was completed at Eastern Washington University. I have 
I got a Bachelor's of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies with minors in Psychology, Sociology, and Communication. Uh, some of my favorite activities include reading, making ice cream, and jumping rope. And then I chose specifically OT because I was working with a child with cerebral palsy for many years. And I saw how OT was able to empower her through encouraging her to be independent in different activities. And I thought that was a very powerful thing and something that I wanted to be a part of. And so OT, and I'm here, and it's been very exciting. Uh, so I will pass it on to our next student, who is Maria Christina, and she'll tell you a little bit about herself. Uh, thank you, Cheyenne. Can you hear me, everyone? Yeah? OK, great. So my name is Maria Cristina. My last name is Jimenez. I'm originally from San Juan, Puerto Rico. I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Um, and then I went to college at a very cold place called uh, Holy Cross in Worcester, Massachusetts. First time I was seeing snow and all of that. Um, and, oh, I forgot to say, I live in LA. I live in Lake Hollywood near Universal Studios. So I went to Holy Cross and I got a BA in theater and uh, a minor in women's studies. Um, and then I went back to school a few years later and got an MFA from the New School for Social Research. And I've spent about 20 years teaching yoga and rolfing. Um, I love to do yoga, in particular, something called restorative yoga, which is about resting your body in different positions so your nervous system can reset. Um, I love being a social activist and reading books about social issues and having conversations with people about it. I have a 23-year-old cat who I love to kiss. Um, and then YOT, uh, when I was very young, I had a very, very, very severe motor vehicle accident. Um, fractured about 12 bones in my body. I used to be in a wheelchair and I was helped by many people. I was helped by many, many people. And ever since that life-changing accident, I did dedicated my life to helping heal myself and heal others. So that's a little bit about myself. I'm uh, very excited to be here. And now I'm going to pass it to my classmate, Patricia, and she'll share a few things with you. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Patricia. I am originally from Orange County, California. I received my bachelor's in psychology at UC Santa Barbara. And then I moved to LA to pursue my master's in occupational therapy. And some of my favorite activities are cooking, traveling, going on long walks, and watching Shark Tank. And YOT. Um, I have always been fascinated with understanding how the opposing poles of nature and nurture can be navigated to influence physical and mental well-being. So as an OT, I want to be able to help others feel empowered despite any challenges, disabilities, or illnesses that they may be experiencing. I would now like to introduce you to Jane. Jane, we can't hear you. Start over. My name is Jane Nava. I was raised in Ohio, and after high school, I moved to Orange County, California, and I currently live in Orange. Um, I decided about six years ago to return to college to complete my original plan from long ago of becoming an occupational therapist. So I went back and finished my bachelor's in kinesiology at Cal State Dominguez Hills. And now I'm almost finished with my OT degree at USC. Um, I enjoy gardening, sewing and quilting, knitting as a relaxation self-care tool, uh, going camping and playing with my dog. And I chose OT because I truly wanted to help others recover and also reach ahead to be able to do what is meaningful to them. And now I'll pass it on to Marissa. Thanks, Jean. So my name is Marissa and I was born in the Los Angeles area and that's where I currently am now. I attended UCLA for my undergraduate degree. I majored in psychology and I minored in child development. Right now with this pandemic, some of my favorite things to do are walking around my neighborhood. Um, I've also taken up gardening for the first time. So that's been really fun. Um, I've got some new rose plants and a big dahlia plant. 
Um, I also love playing with my dog and taking her for walks. And I also really love watching classic films. So many of my favorite films are from the 1930s through the 1960s. Um, and then why did I choose OT? So I chose OT because I loved that it was a profession where I could use a knowledge of science and apply it in a really creative way to support people of any stage of life do whatever is meaningful for them. And um, I remember one of the moments that really solidified my decision was I was volunteering at a hospital and I saw a patient. She was a young teenage girl. Um, she was recovering from a heart surgery and was very weak. And during her OT session, she brushed her hair for the first time in months. And I'll never forget her smile as she talked about how good it felt to be able to touch her hair again and how she'd always loved styling her hair. Um, so this really inspired me. And over the years, I've learned just how important it is to be able to do valued activities for our quality of life. So I'm really excited to be joining this profession. And so I'll pass it on to Christy and she'll introduce herself to you too. Thanks, Marissa. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Christy and I was born here in Los Angeles, California, but I grew up in Taiwan and now I'm back in LA again to pursue my OT degree. And I went to college in Seattle at the University of Washington in Seattle and got a degree in public health. Um, some of my favorite things to do is working out, traveling, doing chair yoga with my parents, and hanging out with my guinea pig Finnegan. And why I chose OT, so a few years ago, a family member of mine had a minor stroke, and he received a lot of help from different healthcare professionals, but one thing that stood out to me is he's always so excited to go to OT sessions, and I saw how um the positive impact of OT has um on my family and him so I really wanted to give back to the families that are experiencing the same thing that my family did so now I'm gonna pass it on to Lishan. Hi everyone um so I'm the last student here I'm of the OT students uh, my name is Lishan. I was born in Singapore, but I grew up in Shanghai, China, so I'm an international student. Um, I went to USC for my undergrad and got a bachelor's in health promotion and disease prevention. And I liked it so much that I came back to do my master's in OT and I'll be staying for another year to do my doctorate. So I'm truly a Trojan through and through. Um, in terms of my favorite activities, I love painting, drawing, and taking care of my plants. And the reason why I chose OT was I just really enjoyed that holistic view of health, that uh, the holistic approach that um, OTs take with health in considering all the components of wellness in a person. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, soon. So I'm going to pass it on to Cheyenne so she can talk a little bit about occupation. Oh, I think you're muted, Cheyenne. So sorry, it's hard to present and find where the mute button is. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about occupation since when you first think of occupation, it's commonly associated with a job. Uh, but as occupational therapists, we think of it just a little differently. We think of it as the things that we need to do, want to do, or have to do on a daily basis. So it could be things as simple as brushing your teeth or sleep. It could be things that you do for leisure, like cooking or playing sports or going to meet with friends, or it could be the things that you do for work. So there's a lot of different ways in which we think of occupations. Uh, I'm gonna pass it to Lishan, who's gonna share a little bit about what occupational therapists do. Um, so, yeah, great. Occupational therapy is basically a profession that helps people across the lifespan do the things that they want and need to do through these occupations that Cheyenne just talked about. So through the therapeutic use of daily activities, and we work with people, you know, across the lifespan of all ages um, in just improving their quality of life and helping them promote health or prevent um, injury, illness, or disability. So as you can see from this picture, um, the occupational therapist is just helping somebody cut an apple, but 
while using an adaptive device. So we have a video on the next slide that will also help hopefully like elucidate a little bit um, what OTs do. We all have life goals, things we need and want to do. Sometimes things get in the way of our goals. Life events can make our goals seem impossible. I love gardening but it's difficult because I have arthritis. I want to drive my car, but I couldn't after my stroke. I need to find a job, but it's been challenging since being diagnosed with schizophrenia. I want to make new friends, but it's hard sound. because I have autism. I need to get dressed in the morning, but I just had a hip replacement and can't bend forward. I have difficulty managing my responsibilities because of my anxiety disorder. I haven't been able to ride my bicycle since I had a brain injury. I need to do my grocery shopping, but it's difficult to remember when I have dementia. It's tough to care for my baby because of my carpal tunnel syndrome. I need to walk my dog, but I have multiple sclerosis. I want to learn the guitar, but my right arm is amputated. I had a spinal cord injury, but I want to live on my own. My occupational therapist helped me to achieve this goal. Occupational therapists help people to find the tools and strategies they need to overcome barriers such as illness and disability and reach their goals. Now I live on my own. I'm learning the guitar. I can walk my dog. I can care for my baby again. I am able to do my grocery shopping on my own. I can ride my new special bike. I am working on managing my responsibilities. Now I can dress myself. I'm making new friends. I'm working with my OT to find the right job for me. My OT helped me to drive again. I have a garden now. Because of occupational therapy, I can! So occupational therapists help patients do what they want and need to do, and that could be through building skills involved with doing the activity, changing the way the activity is done, or introducing the use of assistive devices, among many other strategies. So now Patricia will go into um, a couple of areas that OTs um, can work with. Thank you, LaShawn. So there are so many different areas that make up occupational therapy. OTs can offer support across the lifespan in many areas. And here we have just a few that are listed. Um, they include health and wellness, aging, lifestyle management, um, dysphagia slash swallowing, neurorehabilitation, hand therapy, motor control, ergonomics, and sensory processing. And in the next few slides, we will dive in deeper and look at the specifics within just some of these areas. We would like to keep this presentation interactive, so in the following slides, we will be inviting you to participate. Please feel free to participate if you feel comfortable. Now, Christy will start us off by sharing a bit about health and wellness. Thanks, Patricia. Um, so health and wellness. So this is a diagram of the eight dimensions of wellness developed by SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. And these eight dimensions include emotional, physical, social, occupational, financial, environmental, spiritual, and intellectual well-being. And these are the areas that OTs and other healthcare professionals can help address in the client's life in order to um, maintain a more balanced lifestyle. And the next slide will are some, these are some specific areas that OTs can help clients with. 
Um, they include managing chronic pain, substance abuse, chronic diseases, and these conditions can be managing obesity, diabetes, metabolic diseases, arthritis, and so much more. And OTs can also help um, promote physical activity, help manage sleep hygiene, um, stress management, mental health, mental and social well-being, sexual activity, time management, and spiritual wellness. Um, and now we would do a little activity. So you can either remain seated or stand up if you would like to um, just uh, leave your chair for a little bit. But um, so put your hands together like this and you're gonna raise it up, point it up towards the sky and then you're gonna lean to your right. So we're gonna stretch. So make sure, you're just, just make sure you're st stable and we're gonna stretch for 10 seconds. Okay. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, great. Now shake it off a little bit. Um, and then we're gonna do the same thing reach up to the sky, and then we're gonna stretch towards the left. So, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, so this is just an example of, well, great job, everybody. Thanks for participating. Um, this is just an example of how OTs can um, help kind of manage stress and mental well-being because I'm sure like a lot of us feel a little more, feel a little more relaxed and less tense and then um, just kind of feel more awake after this quick stretch. So yeah, this is an example of how OTs address stress and mental well-being. So um, next I'm gonna pass it on to Patricia for more information on healthy aging. So how can OTs support healthy aging? Not only do we promote health and quality of life, but we work to support aging in place and to preserve meaningful roles and occupations. We can recommend home adaptations and modifications in an effort to maximize independence and safety. Suggestions may include adding railings, replacing doorknobs with lever-style handles, widening do and wi widening doorways. We may also suggest use of adaptive equipment. As I list some examples, think about whether you've seen, heard about, or are interested in owning some of these devices. Suggestions may include a plate guard, utensils with built-up handles, a rocker knife, a dressing stick, and a sock aid. We may also suggest low-cost equipment and other changes such as increasing wattage for better lighting, using a reacher to avoid bending over or standing on a stool. We also help consider all the options to help you get around in the community, which may include addressing problem areas so you can drive safely, providing non-driving options for you to get around the community, and helping you become comfortable with the public transportation system. OTs also teach fall prevention strategies to allow clients to continue to age safely in their homes. This may include a home-based exercise program for strengthening and balance. I will now pass it on to Jane, who will talk about lifestyle management. Thank you, Patricia. I wanted to talk about lifestyle management um, that occupational therapists can help their clients with. Um, we can help people with their daily routines in various ways to promote a healthy and productive lifestyle. These can be in areas of exercise, weight management, pain management, sleep, medication management, goal setting, and activity pacing. A few examples of these are collaborating with the client to set up a plan to keep track of medication dosages, times, and days when they need to be taken. We also help set long-term goals in areas that they would like to improve and then we help them break them down into manageable short-term goals, such as areas of exercise and weight management. 
So on that note, would any of you like to share your current exercise activities along with any ways that they've had to be adjusted due to sheltering in place? You could put them in the chat or unmute and share. So feel free to just put a little information in the chat. We have not going to the gym. Yes, that's happened for most of us. And going on walks. Going on walks, yes. Get some fresh air. Get out of your chair in front of the computer. <laughs> No yoga in person, yes. Someone walks at least 30 minutes a day, that is a really good goal. Walking and exercise videos, and a lot of those can replace things like yoga or other exercise. Well, thank you everyone for sharing. Oh, someone just put um, dance class online and two walks a day, weights while watching TV, walking your dog a few times daily, which I also do. And I think my dog really knows that I have a more free time being at home. So he does start commanding me like someone put at his command. Throwing the ball for your dog, um, doing circuit training with the trainer on Zoom. Um, using packs of water or laundry detergent as weights working out. So it's using what you have at home. It's a really good idea. Well, thank you for sharing those. And hopefully we can help each other with those. And we can help you in the future also. And buying, someone just put buying hand weights. Since you can't go to the exercise room. So, okay. Well, Thank you for all your responses. Now I'm going to pass it on to Marissa for some information about sensory processing. Thank you. Yeah, so something unique to OT is its understanding of sensory processing, especially in reference to managing emotional and physiological arousal. Just to start, the seven sensory systems, as you can see in that picture, are smell, vision, taste, hearing, touch, vestibular, and proprioceptive. And vestibular and proprioceptive may not at first come to mind when you think about your senses, but both actually play a really big role in your day-to-day -day functioning. The vestibular system is your sense of balance and your equilibrium. It's what allows you to have a stable visual image while your body is in movement, while you're walking or in a car, and it helps keep you upright against gravity. It begins to decline at a young age, which explains why maybe like we used to be able to ride roller coasters as children that we can't ride anymore without feeling sick. The proprioceptive system is your sense of where your body is in space and it's activated when your muscles contract or if there's traction or compression of your joints. It provides calming inhibitory input. So if you think about a time when maybe you were nervous and maybe you were cracking your knuckles or vigorously chewing some gum and that's proprioceptive input and it helps keep you regulated. OTs assess someone's sensory preferences and then suggest changes to that person's environment and teach coping strategies so that person's needs can be met and they can function more optimally. So for instance, a person may be called sensation seeking, and that means that they're often looking for sensory experiences. So OT treatment could work on increasing the sensory stimuli to meet those needs. So for instance, having music playing in the background while that person is working so they can stay focused on their task and finding ways to incorporate that into their daily routine. Someone else might be sensation avoiding. So intervention would be trying to find solutions for that person so that they can withdraw from negative sensations in an adaptive way, but still do the things that they need to do. So maybe wearing noise canceling headphones if they have to be in a loud social environment. And I would love to hear from you all. So what strategies do you use to stay calm or to stay focused on your tasks? I know for me, I love to do Pilates. And before I found Pilates, I didn't really enjoy exercising. But with Pilates, I feel like using my own body weight as resistance gives me that proprioceptive input that I need. Um, so I enjoyed that. How about all of you? What, what keeps you calm and regulated? So I'm seeing um, 
using a hammock to relax. So that's awesome. That would be like that slow vestibular rhythm movement. Um, that's very calming. I'm seeing classical music, music in general. Those are awesome. Squeezing on a stress ball. That would be great proprioceptive input. <laughs> Certain drinks, <laughs> going for a drive in your car. So maybe that would be some nice vestibular input. Knitting. That's a really good one. Walking. That would be good proprioceptive input. That's awesome. Yeah, those are great. I love that. I'm glad that people do have strategies and that it's been effective. I'm seeing deep, yes, breathing exercises. That's a really, really good one. Especially the diaphragmatic breathing. The Calm app, I've heard really good things about that. These are awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, everyone. Um, and then in regards to other calming coping strategies that an OT might suggest for self-regulation, um, it could include maybe using scents such as lavender, chewing gum, using deep pressure. So that would be like using a weighted blanket or a tight article of clothing like a vest or a long sleeve shirt. And as well as, you know, stretching and exercise like we've talked about maybe resistance and aerobic exercise to get that proprioceptive input, um, as well as slowing your rocking and deep breathing like someone else already mentioned. So that's just a quick overview of how OTs can assess someone's sensory processing and work with that person to meet those sensory needs so that then they can engage in the activities that they want to do or need to do. And so next I'll pass it on to Lee Sean and she'll talk to you a little bit about ergonomics. Hi everyone. Um, so OTs can also work in the realm of ergonomics. Um, and if you're not sure what ergonomics is, it's basically just adjusting kind of the environment to the person so that they can um, do the task most effectively. And it deals a lot with posture and body positioning. I think something that's important with ergonomics is that we're fitting the task and the environment to the person instead of the other way around. And that we're really trying to reduce the risk of harm. Um, while many professions work within the scope of ergonomics, what makes OT's contribution a little bit special is that we look at habits, routines, and behavior with the tasks that people do. So even though the environment and the work setup is important, uh, we as occupational therapists really work with our clients to make sure that the setup is something that can actually use functionally um, and also make sure that they're incorporating good habits into their work so that they can maximize their wellness. Um, so a great example is, I want you to think about how you're sitting right now. Are you kind of slouched over, lean forward, like kind of looking at the computer? Or are you sitting back using the back support with your legs uh, or your feet touching the ground? Because um, these postures are really different, right? Um, and so that kind of speaks to the importance of having patient education about like what is a good neutral posture for you to be aware of and trying to make sure that you're staying in so that you don't kind of go into these weird positions that might later cause back pain or soreness. Um, so now uh, that's just a good example of how important it is to be really intentional about our habits and behaviors. So now I'm going to let Maria Cristina walk us through another educational component in regards to ergonomics, and it's specifically about eye strain and computer screens. Thank you, Lishan. So for many of us, most of our favorite occupations include the use of screen, of computer screens, of iPads, of cell phone, watching movies, TV shows, talking to family, going to Zoom meetings. And one of the drawbacks from that is that our eyes can get very dry, fatigued, and strained from staring at screens. So just notice right now how your eyes have been feeling. Optometrists are also seeing more and more people with what's called digital eye strain in the last few years. What happens is that the eye works harder with the screen than it does with the written page. There's something about the pixels, the electronic characters that are not as sharp as the letters in a written page. So the little eye muscles have to work harder when you're looking at a screen. Also, we blink less when we're looking at a screen. Normally, we blink about 15 times a minute. 
but when we spend a long time looking at computers, for instance, we blink less. Furthermore, um, when we get older, the eyes get drier. This could be a combination of hormonal changes. This could be related to side effects with medications, it could be climate, wearing contact lenses. So all of that contributes to the eye feeling dry, fatigued, and strained. OTs can help you continue to do all those things you love to do with screens, with computer screens, but also help introduce routines to your day so that you can continue to partake in those activities and stay healthy. One such routine is called the 2020 rule. And an eye doctor from California came up with that. And it's, it's very simple and it's beneficial to the eye health and to mental health. And basically, every 20 minutes so you're invited to set a timer if you're going to spend a long time in front of a computer every 20 minutes you take a break and you look out a window if you don't have a window you can look at something far away that's about 20 feet away for 20 seconds so every 20 minutes you look at something that's 20 feet away for 20 seconds and we're going to try that right now so i invite you to either stay seated and look at a window or stand up and look at a window and if you don't have a window look at something far away and then i'm going to set a timer for just 20 seconds and here we go and as you are looking out notice how your eye relaxes a little bit maybe you're staring at the sky or a tree Maybe you're breathing deeper. That was it. That was 20 seconds. So you're invited to do this throughout your day and then notice if you feel better when you do this. And now we're nearing the end of our presentation. We wanted to share a little bit with you about our hopes for this experience of working together. So all, all of us are heading into older adulthood. There is so much wisdom in older adults. The younger generations have a lot to learn from older adults, and they in turn can also learn from the younger generations. The possibility of a respectful and dynamic collaboration is there. We wanna get to know you and learn from your life experiences. We also want to share insights from the profession of occupational therapy applicable to your health and wellness. Unfortunately, we live in an era where there's a lot of discrimination towards older adults, which is a shame because with age comes wisdom. We all have the power to change the narrative of discrimination associated with becoming older. We can talk about the changes that happen with age in a way that's real, but also empowering and uplifting. We want to provide you support regarding topics that you find most meaningful, especially during COVID, to enhance your well-being. And now my classmate Marissa is going to finish our presentation and talk a little bit about a survey we'll be doing. Yes, thanks. So as mentioned earlier, OT places such a high emphasis on providing strategies and support tailored to each person's own personal goals. So we're going to be leading some of the Zoom sessions in the coming weeks on July 10th, July 24th, and August 7th. We want to know which health and wellness topics that you find meaningful and valuable. We'll be sending out a survey um, later today, and we would really like your feedback about whatever topics um, you'd like us to present in some of these upcoming weekly meetings. The survey will also allow you to set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation with us. So if you're inter interested in getting any support with regard to anything that we've discussed today, or if there's any other topics that are listed on the survey that sound interesting, please go ahead and sign up for a one-on-one -on -one meeting with us and we would love to, to work with you and get to know you more. Um, so thank you so much for listening to our presentation. And at this time, we can take questions um, or comments. So is there any questions that we can answer? Feel free to type them in the chat, or you can unmute yourselves and share with us as well. Well, we I, thank you so much for doing this. I, I, so I, I'm going to open this up, Karen. We'll, you, you'll definitely be next. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'm actually going to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one, 
Uh, we've done this with the School of Pharm Pharmacy. We'd love to have as many of you sign up for a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with our, uh, our grad students. I think that that's a wonderful um, opportunity. And uh, please fill out that survey. Karen. I was so excited when I retired that I could do yoga as often as I wanted. And I ended up within six months having major issue with my knee and it's arthritic and it's not going to change. So I was very interested that Maria Christina mentioned restorative yoga because that was, I was told that I could do that yoga because it doesn't put so much stress on my knee, but I never followed up because the yoga place I went to didn't have that. How can I find a Zoom session to try to do some restorative yoga? I miss it. I mean, I'm not plugging, but I do teach one tomorrow and it's online and I will happily give you my email and, and okay. you can join it and it's donation and you don't, you know, I will be an honor to have you there. So there you go. But just, I mean, I don't, uh, it sounds weird to be plugging my class. So I'll just say, generally speaking, there's wonderful, um, you can Google, um, restorative yoga videos and, and YouTube and find that um, out. And I will happily, I'm very passionate about yoga and restorative yoga in particular. I will happily share resources, ideas, and you know, anyone can do it. You just lie down and support your body with towels, blankets, so that your nervous system shifts from, shifts from fight or flight into relaxation response. And it's so healing. Sounds oh, great. So you have a Saturday class, is that what I have a Saturday class every week, it's online. Um, yeah, I'm just, maybe I should just put my email and if you wanna email me, okay. okay. That sounds good. Okay, on the chat. And we will be uh, providing a place for you to sign up. Uh, we'll be sending all of you um, the, the link if you wanna sign up for one-on-ones and also to, to take the survey because how you respond to the survey will give us the titles for the uh, upcoming presentations on the 10th, the 24th, and August 7th. For those of us that are working from home, I'm a current staff member, do you guys uh, have videos like on a site somewhere of things that we can do for those of us that are new to this working from home? Um, that, you know, I don't know, stretches or something fun that you can get some of us staff and faculty members to do. I mean, is there something that you guys might have like two minute videos somewhere that could encourage us while we're all learning to work from home um, and what we can do to help our bodies? We can definitely compile resources. I'm sure there are many throughout. Um, I took this ergonomics class actually that uh, where our professor tried to make sure that we incorporated some of those things into class. So she always had one person who would have an alarm that would go off every 20 minutes for us to do stretches and to look out the window. So I can definitely look into that and see if we can find resources to compile for everyone to use. There's also a question in the chat. Somebody asked, what could you achieve in a one-on-one? -on -one? If one of the other OT students wants to help answer that question. Yeah, I can explain a little bit about that. Um, that's a really hard question because really it's what you are ready to do and what we can support you with. So it's really individual to each person. We do have a limited time here, but we're hoping to be able to set up a program where other OT students will be able to come in and support as well. But obviously we will do whatever is in our power to support whatever you need. So Jerry Walker was making a, a suggestion. You did a wonderful job, all of you, on this PowerPoint presentation. I think it would be great if you could uh, put together, we could videotape it, a Zoom, where you, you, know, you stand back and you actually show us how to do some of the uh, various, very simple, um, exercises that wouldn't cause any you know pain pain or, or whatever some things like the chair yoga thing or something like that would be great just a few would be great anyone else have questions or comments? i would like to say something hello my name is judy yes 
Um, I just wanted to make a point that, you know, walking is a great exercise. And when I was working full time at USC, whenever I got really tense and, you know, like I just couldn't take it anymore, you know, I mean, there are those times. If you get out and you walk really, you know, as fast as you can for like 20, 30 minutes or even 15 minutes, it does so much good. I mean, you just, all the tension just flows right out of you and you just can come back and start all over again. You know, and I, and I walk every day and I love, um, you know, mostly I walk with my horse. I have a horse. Um, and, but I also, another a great um, thing for, you know, calming, and I know we've talked about this already, but um, is if you have pets, you know, if you just spend time with your pets, um, quiet time with your pets, that that's just so, so therapeutic. And so that's what I wanted to offer. Thanks. Yeah. That's really great. We actually have learned a lot about how important walking is. And there are many aspects of walking that are really good for your health. So it's great that you shared it with us and we definitely support that as well. There's also a question in the chat. Um, it says that this person has some OT sessions through USC which is great because USC Health Plan does offer some really great uh, resources for OT. And they asked uh, if they have to be referred to meet with us for OT. And the answer to that is no, not through this, mostly uh, because we are here as students, we are still learning. This is not official through your health plan. This is us volunteering to provide services that we can. So all you got to do is sign up through our survey and we would be happy to call you. Uh, would, would any one of you like to give us a, um, this was a wonderful presentation, how do you work with physical therapy? So people many times get OT and PT confused. So if you would, someone would like to uh, just give us a little clarification of when you would use one and not the other and vice versa. I can speak a little bit to that and maybe Jane or someone else could also add. Um, I was part of the IPGC program at school, the interprofessional geriatric curriculum, interprofessional. So different students from different professions work together. And it was a highlight of my graduate school experience. So I worked with PT students, medical students, PAs, um, pharmacy, and we would work with a resident. So it wasn't someone who was, um, a, a patient. It was um, a person who was living in an assisted living and they volunteered. Uh, and the PT student would be uh, looking at balance and strength. And I was offering more ideas about uh, home modifications. Uh, uh, a lot of falling when it happens, it usually happens from the bed to the toilet at night. So just looking at things that are on the floor that could be fall hazards like electronic cords or rugs, uh, books, boxes. So things like that. So that's a way uh, that you, you could see the, the partnership because they're, they're really sister professions. They're, they're really allied healthcare professions. They work together. Unfortunately, most people know what PT is and they don't know what OT is. So we end up using it to define ourselves. We're, we're not like PT, we're this but we're both important and, and sisters, yeah. I have a question. Since OT is also a, a division within dentistry, as well as PT, how are those three disciplines working together for the benefit of dental students? Because I know that one of the issues mm -hmm. facing dentists has to do with chronic pain, because of poor posture and other things like that. And that has always been one of my interests. I know that we, at, at, at least in the OT division, we do have a lab dedicated to ergonomics. And I believe that one of the labs is looking specifically at like surgeons and dentists that specifically have to kind of like lean over and are in hunched positions a lot of times. So they do, 
they are currently doing research about that um, in our division. And I know if Marissa wants to speak a little bit about it, that there's also another lab that does sensory um, interventions for children with autism who go to the dentist, I believe, or? Uh, yes, that's, that's right. So a lot of um, children with autism, they have maybe some sensory hypersensitivity. So going to the dentist is a really difficult experience for them. The, the, the lights, the, the sounds, the, the oral area is very sensitive. And so one of the labs um, is focused on creating like a more, um, like a more inclusive environment that adapts to those needs. Um, and so that's been really awesome to see. So I think that there are some really great, you know, overlap. And then also that, you know, oral hygiene and taking care of oral hygiene is, you know, an activity of daily living. And so I think dentistry supports that. And um, I know OTs also sometimes work on like oral motor skills. And so sometimes it might be like a structural thing that, you know, a problem that a dentist would intervene. So I think it's amazing to see how all the health professions really do work together. Yeah, I wanted to add to, uh, I think it was Calvin Lau who asked the question, um, how, because brushing your teeth is a daily, act it's an activity of daily living, right? It's what we call an ABL, an activity of daily living, something we need to do every day. Um, we could also offer adaptive equipment if they're having a hard time holding the toothbrush. Uh, sometimes opening the tooth, the tooth cap is hard, the, the paste, the little tooth cap. So we could suggest squeezing toothpaste directly in the mouth for someone who's having a hard time with fine motor skills. So an OT can come up with all these very creative strategies to help you do the things that you need to do every day. Also, there seems to be a lot of research happening around dental assistance with ergonomics and mindfulness to help prevent overuse injuries. So that's really exciting as well. I also wanted to add a little bit, um, going back to what Maria Christina was talking about and the differences and similar similarities between PT and OT. And to kind of balance that out, OT uh, definitely looks at the patient in a holistic way. So we're not just looking at um, a motor ability um, or, you know, we're looking more at the functional use of things. So. Um, Whereas PT works on strengthening and say walking, we work on now, how are you going to walk around your kitchen? How are you going to carry things after you've had a stroke? How are you going to cook? Um, so it would be items like that. So it moves it into all of your daily life activities. Well, this has really been wonderful. Um, and again, I commend you on the work that you've done. Um, to to create these slides and we are recording this session and if you could send us the slides as well we will create a web page so that our group can can go back to the page and and look at your um, uh, at look at the PowerPoint those that can, have not attended could uh, we'll make sure that we edit this a little bit so that we cut off some of the you know parts of the beginning and at the end um, and have that available. And then if you all are going to be focusing on creating maybe some uh, good resources that, uh, that are available, um, we will post that as well for you. So that can be your page and um, it will be part of the resources that we offer through the Emeriti Center. Any other, any other questions? Um, any other comments from our students? I just posted a last minute question that how does everyone deal with occupational therapy in this time of COVID when you really are supposed to distance and all of this, you know, really not supposed to be going to people's homes? Yeah, that's a really good question. And that's really a lot of the questions we have been asking as well. It seems like there have been a lot of strides for telehealth and teletherapy, which has been really expanding in new and exciting ways over this time. It seems like it's doing really well from what I hear from my peers and other professors in the division. So that's a really exciting thing that's happening. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
It would seem to me, although it's very difficult for somebody living alone, but um, there are so many of us that need help, OT help with ergonomics, because we have makeshift desks and makeshifts, you know, right now I've been standing, I am standing and my monitor is on a cardboard box, as is my laptop that's connected. And I'm trying very hard not to trip over a cord that I plugged in so that I can charge my cell phone. But um, having, if, if you have one other person that's in your household, then that person could be using their cell phone to be showing the occupational therapist the different um, views although it's not perfect. Um, I think that that's really important. So you're gonna be creating some really great tools, just questions that you can ask us as we are either sitting or standing or you know, those kinds of things. Questions that we can ask ourselves if you have answers for like the 20, 20, 20 rule. That's excellent. Or the 90 degree angle rule, does that still, is that still the same? You know, your knees and your, you know, your, 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 the body position and your arms and all of that, your elbows are at 90 degrees. Yes. I saw Jane go, yes, everybody. Could you explain that 90 degree thing? Yeah, sure. Hips at 90 degrees, uh, knees at 90 degrees, ankle is 90 degrees. So you're, you're not slouching, you're sitting lined up. Um, I, I also want to add that it's, it, you also want to vary your position. That's why I love the 20-20-20 rule because it invites you to get up and interrupt your sedentary activity, right? So you don't just want to sit with a 90-90, you also want to sit in different ways because the, the stillness over time, we start to slump and all that. But yeah, 90-90-90 is great. And a great tip involved with that too is making sure you're drinking a lot of water because naturally when you drink a lot of water you have to get up to go pee you know so that those natural breaks of getting up to go get water getting up to go pee those things are actually really good that that, that movement incorporating that into your day is really good for you and yeah add to that oh sorry and just add to that um like the little like the little stretch breaks that we did earlier or just standing around and shaking your your limbs a little bit that helps too yeah, definitely. I have a Fitbit and uh, not an inexpensive one, not a fancy one. And so every hour it reminds me that I haven't done 250 steps. So then I'll get up and run around or walk around or <laughs> I just ignore it. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. I ignore it too. Going, What's that? What is, what is that doing to my, you know, but, but I am getting into the habit of doing that and then drinking water as soon as you get up, for example, as you said, to pee then you have a glass of water. <laughs> so you can remind yourself to do it again. Uh, otherwise, the dehydration, especially for those of us that are over 60, um, and I don't wanna target that in particular, but boy, if I get dehydrated, I'm feeling awful. And, it, and being dehydrated is seriously detrimental to your health, seriously. So and, and, and add to that with the eyes too, I was trying to bring up that piece that looking at a computer screen for a long time dries the eye more yeah actually i wanted to um you know it's interesting because i read an article that it says if you're if you feel tired you should drink a, a glass of water because the, the, by getting hydrated it'll bring you to life and i noticed that in the morning because i love drinking coffee even though i drink decaf you know it it dehydrates you. So then like about maybe nine o'clock, I'm feeling really like, oh my God, I'm so tired. But then if I drink some water, I'm fine. So water is really important. That's huge. And I'm hoping that, that uh, these wonderful students um, and educators will be talking uh, also about sleep. That is super important for your brain health um, and memory. Um, and overall well-being, uh, so that's really good. And then one of your slides was showing all the different, the different things for holistic wellness that we need to take care of and pay attention to. And it is many times quite enlightening when you realize that maybe you're missing some of the things on that wheel. Uh, so I'd love to have you go over that sometime with us in one of your sessions 
um, hugely, hugely important. So again, this is a, a, a wonderful partnership. We are so happy to have you join us and we're just so, uh, and thank you, Betty, because it was Betty's connection that got us all started um, with this, with this, uh, and it's like, it's research, it's practical training for our students. Our students are going to learn from you and we're going to learn, you know, uh, the retirees and current faculty, staff and alumni are going to definitely learn from you. So you are educators, you're researchers, and we really appreciate you very much. Mm -hmm. so, again, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone.